know that. It comes out to me as being brutal, melodic. You know, regular Slayer people. Ah! Are we fucking nuts tonight? People are demons. People are evil. We create evil. Nobody should be at a concert worshipping Satan. Because everyone seems extreme. What? No warning? You know, we're people too. Tough to be first class with your white trash. Roach class all the way. What? What have you been listening to over the past week? Um, I've been listening to uh, some some nice driven heavy metal uh, from Three Inches of Blood. They're from Canada. I don't remember where from Canada, but uh, the album is from 2004, Advanced and Vanquish. Some of my favorite, you know, very driving, full force uh, fight metal type songs are from that yeah, album. Yeah, they're like uh, battle metal or something. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't listened to them a whole lot. No, Destroy the Orcs, time. Axes of Evil, uh, some classics. I have about five, six songs that I really, really, really like on that album. What have you been listening to? I have been listening to the latest album from Angelus Apatrita, a Spanish metal band. Um, this album actually came out this year. Uh, they are uh, they're very very thrashy. They're, they're fucking thrash metal. Flat out. Um, you know, we'll play some samples from both these bands and uh, let you guys check them out. We'll post uh, links to, uh, to their pages or maybe like where you can buy their music or something. But uh, if you like thrash, definitely check out Angelus Apatrita. Those guys are they're doing it right, man. Um, the newest album that they have out, uh, Cabaret. Um, uh, let me look at it again. Yeah, uh, I mean, we were listening to this before uh, we started this video. And yeah. I, I, I mean, I agree to all, with all his points this far. It's uh, pretty, really good sound. Cabaret, they like guillotine. One of the things that I really like about this album is the fact that I can listen to it from beginning to end with uh, without skipping anything. I, I just thoroughly enjoy the entire album. Um, something I hate when, when bands do, and I understand that sometimes there are contractual obligations to... Uh, you know, for, for length or for uh, just getting an album out. But man, when, when a band puts filler on an album, it just seems like such a waste. It's a waste of, uh, it's a waste of money uh, for, the, uh, for the consumer. You know, I don't want to buy an album uh, that has a few really good songs, uh, but a, a bunch of filler. Uh, and one of the bands I feel that does that, and this is, I, I actually, Kind of hope this does piss some people off. But Tool, mm -hmm. Tool does that. Uh, Tool does it. A Perfect Circle does it. Uh, the reason I mentioned them, uh, the new Tool album is coming out at some point in the near future. Um, not exactly sure when, but uh, A Perfect Circle just came out with a new album. Yeah, I've seen that. Um, and you know, that's it's it's very typical of, of those bands to uh, have songs that basically amount to being filler. And uh, I just. Don't like when bands do that. When I when a band comes out with a new album, I like to purchase that album and you know try to listen to it in its entirety. But uh, you know, for something like that, I would probably preview songs on YouTube and um, buy singles, download singles from iTunes if I want them. Yeah, for albums like that, uh, it seems like for me, um, the more uh, I like an album, and I'm able to go all the way through with it, like Obscure, for instance, uh, all their albums. I, I barely know any other song names just because I throw them the full album and don't skip a song. I yeah. don't know any of their song names, uh, but a few, <laughs> but they're one of my favorite bands. I just know their albums, and I just play it all the way through. One of the singles from uh, Cabaret de, de la Guillotine um, is called Farewell, and it's uh, it, it's not your typical thrash song. That this band, and Jealous Apatrita, they uh, they put a lot of elements that I love about metal into their uh, into their music, uh, and and their style across their music uh, ranges from the uh, the uh, slow and melodic to the uh, just full power fucking thrash, and uh, I love it. It's no five finger death punch, That's but I mean I guess it'll it'll work.
You know, like a Shadows Fall. Fucking love metal. Five Figure Death Punch is my favorite band. <laughs> I, I'm not going to second that. But uh, something that I've been listening to that <laughs> just came out. Uh, it actually came out June 15th, so a few days ago. I think that's Friday or something. But uh, it's called, uh, the band is called Lula Hell, and uh, the album is called A Live. Um, Lula Hell is a two member death metal band mixed with some technicality and brutal death uh, elements with many guest members varying on this uh, new record that just came out. I think Hannes Grossman plays uh, on all the drums for the album. Aleph is uh, Lula Hell's second full length with their first release in 2014 and the band forming in 2010. The lyrical themes are about philosophy and uh, society. Uh, they're actually not too far from the band that you mentioned in Spain, but Lila Hell is uh, from Nigeria. Not too far. Um, I'm interested in giving them a listen. They're kind of weird. I mean, they're they're not very consistent because they have <coughs> they have so many big uh, uh, musicians playing on their album. It's a lot of it is uh, session musicians on the album. Oh, okay. So it's pretty strange. But uh, Nigeria doesn't really have a, a big uh, metal scene at all. They're this band is that there's a, maybe a few dozen decent, or I mean, a few dozen bands that probably tour around Nigeria uh, that are from there. And uh, I think these, the members of uh, Lila Hell, is actually from, uh, part of a lot of those bands as well. Um, so it's almost like a uh, uh, a Bortnagar type project from Nigeria, maybe? Yeah. Yeah, that's, that, that's probably a good way to put it. Um, there's a lot of variation and uh, uh, varying drums. Uh, I wouldn't say prog, just more, al maybe even alternative metal, but they do mostly stick to extreme metal. So, uh, I guess uh, alternative metal isn't really used a lot. What What would you say is alternative metal? Fuck man, I really don't know. I'd say like some. Sis on Down is a good band. That's I would, metal. yeah, I guess they would be considered like alternative metal or, yeah. or whatever. Um, you may call these guys alternative extreme, uh, extreme metal. I don't. Yeah, alternative extreme metal. <laughs> That's uh, we, we may we, coin a new term here. We just made it up. <laughs> <laughs> the arrangements of is, uh, this is that like a mixture between uh, Five Finger Death Punch and uh, like Immortal. I'd say <laughs> more like Five Finger and maybe if. Corn went even further on the gent uh, sign, so something like that. Interesting. Very, very extreme, very uh, technical, uh, amazing. Um, the uh, the corn and five hundred death punch is amazing. But, uh, the record is mildly polished. It's uh, it's really not too polished at all, but it's very uh, listenable. Um, there is, it sounds. It, it reminds me a lot of Vader. Uh, the band Vader, I think they're from Poland. It's a uh, pretty extreme metal band. Um, with a lot more variation in it. Um, let's see. That's actually something that I, I somewhat prefer to a point in uh, albums that I listen to is uh, for them to not be uh, overproduced, uh, I like there to be a, a more um, raw, live, uh, organic sound to some of these albums. For me, it depends. Uh, I mean, I don't want it to... You know, I'm not going to really enjoy listening to something that sounds like it was recorded inside a metal trash can, but... I'm, I'm, I'm on two opposite sides of what you're saying at the same time. For black metal, I I mean, a lot of black metal, I love that, you know, very, Old Dark Throne. Yeah. Very unpolished, uh, aggressive uh, productions, but for, you know, technical... Uh, you know, uh, compositions and stuff like that. I, I do like to hear all the individual instruments. I want to, you know, the low end instruments not to be muddy, stuff like that. I want it to be pretty polished uh, for most music, but that's just me. But uh, you can check, uh, I'll, I'll post a link in the description. But uh, yeah, Lula Hell, definitely worth checking out. Pretty cool project. New to album, album. Uh, I guess that's. That, would you call them metal? Man, you know what? A long time ago, I would have called Tool metal, and now Tool is a band that I would consider to be uh, progressive, uh, pr 
progressive rock. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe mix hard rock and progressive rock. Yeah, like progressive hard rock. Um, you know, that's not saying that I don't like Tool. I do. Uh, I just don't like some of the stuff that they do. But I think some people call them new metal. What do you think about that? They're far from new metal. I agree with that. They uh, <laughs> they basically pioneer. They helped pioneer a uh, a new sound back in the uh, back in the nineties, and uh, they they were innovative and they were doing doing shit that people that other musicians weren't necessarily doing at the time. Uh, that that made it into uh, the mainstream as much as they did. Yeah, I I agree with that. So an album that I like that's coming out soon. It's coming out um, June 29th. I'm probably gonna fuck up this name. Uh, do you want to try this name? <laughs> oh, um, Shy Magorgon. Uh, I'm gonna post this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Shyla Magog. <laughs> The, is that a phlegm sound? <laughs> Shala McGoffner? Is that, oh, is, that that's yeah, that, that makes the GH makes an F sound. Uh, we'll, we'll say that, Shala McGoffner. That sounds like a, a country music star. And uh, the, that's the band name. <laughs> We're probably not going to say that again in this video. Shyla McGoffner. We got it. We got it down. Let's not <laughs> fuck it up. <laughs> Y'all um, kids, Shyla McGoffner down here at live concert oh my God. at the riverfront. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> you create so, a um, country promoter. Yes. <laughs> uh, the album name is called Transcends. Uh, this is also a two member band. Uh, they're progressive death metal from uh, the Netherlands, uh, South Limburg. I was in the Netherlands uh, two years ago. I really like that country. Uh, the band formed in 2013 and they're signed to uh, Napalm uh, Records. Their lyrics revolve around mankind, sorrow, and nature. Uh, this is their second album, uh, just like uh, Lula Hell. And uh, with Emergence uh, being their first uh, album released in 2014. It's uh, basically atmospheric black metal, if you take away the black metal. <laughs> so it's kind of an <laughs> addict to death metal. So <laughs> it's kind of cool. I really, really dig it. Uh, uh, let's see. And uh, there's there's a tiny bit of uh, progressive elements uh, that produces atmospheric nature, the atmospheric nature of this album. It's but it's uh, much more esoteric. Uh, with these clusters, one would not know how the pr uh, production uh, of the album would turn out. But it's uh, extremely polished, unlike the uh, atmospheric black metal, which is cameras over there, dude. Which uh, the atmospheric black metal is less polished than most black other. Other forms of black metal. Uh, the uh, lyrics are impactfully uh, added to the dissonance and atmospheric natures of the band. And uh, again, I'll post the links of this band that I'm not going to say. Uh, Shyla McGoffner. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll need a drink. Well, we have those. Yes, we do. What are we drinking today on the Metal Zine channel? Hmm. New Holland Brewing Dragon's Milk Bourbon Barrel Aged Stout. This stuff, let's see, is 11% alcohol by volume. Rich, toasty, and creamy with heavy notes of vanilla and just enough familiar warmth from oak barrels reminds us that all of life's events, big or small, are worth celebrating. I completely agree with this. Pairings, red meat, smoked foods, balsamic, rich cheese, and say dark ball chocolate. Sandwich? Balls sandwich. Yes, a ball sandwich. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and dark chocolate. <laughs> oh, those so, go well together. Eleven percent. <laughs> I, I think that I've actually had this before, but I was probably, I'd probably had several other beers and don't really remember what it tastes like so <laughs> we'll find out today crack it open and uh we're gonna see sampling this out of some uh knob creep tumblers oh that is 
That is nice and dark. There you are, sir. Thank you. Put a nice top on. Get the chunks out of the mirrors. <laughs> <laughs> It's actually not bad. Uh, it does have the uh, the rich flavors and tones. <laughs> yeah, I just down the whole thing. So I'm actually gonna try to taste it a little bit. It has a nice thick aroma to it. It does. It does. Kind of a nutty aftertaste. A little bit. Uh, Very smooth aftertaste. It's definitely not hoppy or anything like that. No, it's not hoppy at all, and that's actually something that I yeah. greatly dislike in uh, in beer is a strong, uh, bitter hoppy flavor. That's a lot of the uh, a lot of the uh, sophisticated hipster types love IPAs, and it's like every IPA that I've tasted has tasted like shit. Well, this will go smoothly then. From uh, here on out, we plan on doing this uh, each of our weekly uh, album discussions. So. Yeah, it has a. Uh, it, it's almost it, it's almost like coffee. Yeah, it's a very coffee. Uh, I think taste. this would taste all right warm. Yeah, I think it would too. I would be okay drinking I, this. I really don't like beer warm typically, but I think it'd be fun. Uh, some beers I like warm. Some beers I like cold. Uh, if you guys have any suggestions for beers to, for us to try on uh, on one of our videos, uh, let us know, and we'll see if we can find it locally to me or him and. Uh, yeah, we'll crack it open on, on camera and have a taste. Just uh, We'll try IPAs. I'm not against trying them. I just know that <laughs> most IPAs that I've had have tasted exactly the same. Like fucking like bitter, super hoppy. Since we're on the subject, and this is kind of an introduction on this topic, what uh, what's your background? What do you like? I drink a lot of bourbon. I, I love... Uh, my, my staple go-to is uh, Jim Beam. Uh, I like the higher proof uh, distillations of Jim Beam. Lately I've been drinking a, uh, a Jim Beam Distiller's Cut uh, 100 proof and it's aged five to six years. And uh, it's either that or uh, Devil's Cut. Um, we can start trying some bourbons too sometime. That's fine. You do a shot. Do a shot. I'll sit down and drink a glass of it and we'll uh, go from there but yeah uh, this is this is what we're gonna add to our uh, weekly videos will be a uh, review of an adult beverage nice repertoire mm -hmm. yeah I like uh, I like bourbon as well um, Knob Creek is a classic Four Roses yeah it's uh, mostly Kentucky uh, and, you know most bourbons are from Kentucky I would imagine but I also like Blanton's. Do you like Blanton's? It's kind of expensive. I have not tried. I don't. I might have tried Blanton's. I'm not sure if I have or not. It sounds to me. Uh, if I end up getting a hold of a bottle of uh, uh, Blood Oath, we'll try that on camera as well. Very nice. uh, their new uh, new pact is out now. Pack number three. Uh, this is a very limited release bourbon that they put out every year. It's a, it's a blended bourbon, and um, it's worth every penny. Absolutely worth every penny. How much was this? How much did these cost? <clears throat> They're not cheap, but uh, I think uh, it was 12 bucks for four. So. 12 bucks for a four pack? Is yeah. that what they come in a four pack? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's not too bad for something like this. Yeah, but the alcohol for like two to two and a half beers, regular American beers. So. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, Terry's drinking uh, much more than me today because I am going to have to drive in a little bit. I don't. I don't have to talk about <laughs> shit to do today except uh, talk about fucking booze and metal, man. Yeah. Anything else we want to add? Uh, yeah, I'm going to give a short introduction to our little buddy here. This is my friend Jerry Lee, and uh, he's blind. He has metal eyes. <laughs> Definitely. 
Yes, the death metal eyes. Now, every time we start filming or uh, or doing anything, he seems to be he, he wants to be a part of it. He wants to be included, which uh, basically means laying across my lap or or anything whenever I'm uh, trying to do anything. Yeah, if you ever see the uh, video kind of shake a little bit, it's not an earthquake. Yeah, it's it's him it's bumping into the into the quick. fucking sand. <laughs> but he doesn't seem to mind metal music at all. It's red. But um, so we've been putting out consistently putting out videos for about a week now. You know, we're still pretty early, but uh, I would like I would like a goal of putting out at least four videos a week. Seeing how that goes, so it should be pretty enjoyable. Yeah, we have uh, we have a lot of things planned for this uh, this channel, and uh, you know, feedback from the people who view it, feedback from people uh, who subscribe or, or uh, follow us on Facebook or whatever is uh, greatly appreciated, uh, and we will take every. I'm not going to say every, but we will take almost every uh, suggestion into consideration, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because we want to know what you all want to see. Yeah, there's plenty of stuff that we want to talk about, that we want to do, but we want to know what you as viewers want to see. Yeah. So, as always, uh, stay, stay metal. Good.